Mary Oliver Biography Mary Oliver was born on September 10, 1935, in Maple Heights, Ohio. Oliver's father was a social studies teacher and an athletics coach in the Cleveland Public Schools. She began writing poetry at the age of 14 and at 17 visited the home of the late Pulitzer Prize winning poet Edna St. Vincent Millay in Austerlitz, Upper New York State. She was deeply influenced by Edna and briefly lived in Edna's home. Oliver and Norma, Edna's sister, became close friends and Oliver, quote, more or less lived there for the next six or seven years, running around the 800 acres like a child helping Norma, or at least being company to her, end quote, and assisting with organizing the late poet's papers. In the mid-1950s, Oliver attended both Ohio State University and Vassar College, though she did not receive a degree from either institute. In the late 1950s, in a return trip from Australis, Oliver met her longtime partner, Molly Malone Cook. She was a photographer whom she met on a return visit to Australis in the late 1950s. She described in her novel, Our World, quote, I took one look and fell, hook and tumble, end quote. The couple moved to Provincetown, Massachusetts, and the surrounding Cape Cod landscape has had a marked influence on Oliver's work. Known for its clear and poignant observations and evocative views of the natural world, Oliver's poetry is firmly rooted in place and the romantic nature tradition. The couple lived there happily for 40 years until Cook's death in 2005, but Oliver continues to live there. As Oliver stays hidden from the media, she has given very few interviews, saying she prefers to, for her writing to speak for itself. According to an interview with the New York Times, Oliver recalls, I too fell in love with the town, that marvelous convergence of land and water, Mediterranean light, fishermen who made their living by hard and difficult work from frighteningly small boats, and both residents and sometimes visitors, the many artists and writers, and I just had to say, end quote. Her work received early critical attention, and her fifth book, American Primitive, in 1983, won the Pulitzer Prize. With more works, the transition from engaging the natural world to engaging more personal realms was evident in her 1992 book, New and Selected Poems, which won the National Book Award. The volume contains poems from eight of Oliver's previous volumes, as well as previously established newer, newer work, The Poetry Foundation. And Oliver continued her celebration of the natural world in later collections, including Winter Hours, Prose, po prose Poems, and Poems in 1999, Why I Wake Early in 2004, New and Selected Poems, Volume 2 in 2004, and Swan, Poems and Prose Poems in 2010. Critics have compared Oliver to other great American lyric poets and celebrations of nature, including Marianne Moore, Elizabeth Bishop, Edna St. Vincent Millay, her mentor, John Muir, and Walt Whitman. Mary Oliver's passion for nature is prevalent throughout all her works. She cherishes the wonders and beauty of the natural world and aims to recover a closer relationship to nature by expressing her affection through poems and essays. Oliver takes her intimate observations of nature and allows herself time to contemplate her own place in it all. Mary Oliver is fearless in having a strong point in each of her poems. Her poems often start on the surface, remarking on the outer be natural beauty of graceful wild geese a golden sunflower field, or a deep green forest. However, her poems never linger too long on the surface before launching into the deeper meaning to reveal her feelings and objectives in writing the poem. Her poems do have a sameness sometimes. It's rare that she writes anything personal or anything indoors related. You can tell that she spends most of her days outdoors. But the sameness also leads to an impression that this woman is in the game, the game of life. Everything she sees is an opportunity for either celebration or loss, and everything she sees makes her think of something else. 
It gives her an opportunity to search deep and write thoughtfully. She embraces the pain in her poems and genuinely tries to work it out. In fact, one of the astonishing aspects of Oliver's work is the consistency of her passionate tone over her long career. She repeatedly reminds her readers to appreciate their time on this earth. Evincing her redemptive outlook, she once declared, It is good to remember that it is good to be alive. Oliver's imaginative poems remain celebratory, even as they admit the pain of life and the natural approach of death. Her poems sustain rather than divert us, calling us to encounter and embrace pain, grief, and death, as well as joy. Oliver's poems observe, search, pause, appreciate, glorify, and embrace every sense of the natural world. A proud aficionado, Mary Oliver is truly passionate about being alive in a world full of nature, and she shares her passion with the world through each poem and essay she writes.